today we're going to get some paint on this. This is the T5 engine we're going to use instead of the old Forsen the red block known as the B230F that is currently sitting in our 740 project car. As you can see the engine is now clean and if you missed that step in the process be sure to check the link up top to watch the cleaning of the engine. It's in Swedish but I did add English subtitles to it so that no one following this series outside of Sweden would feel left out of that step. Now let me show you what I did to get to this point prepped and ready for paint. Now I did do a little fail when I bought the chemicals to get the engine clean because I didn't buy enough of them and now that the engine was clean and I've used up all the products I still had some oxide remaining and I tried to get rid of it by using this soda blaster. It's not recommended to sandblast an engine just because of the damage the sand can do to it if it's somehow gotten to the engine. So I settled for uh, blasting with soda which just turns into dust and can be washed off easy and doesn't cause serious damage if caught in the engine. It looks like this. It's like a fine, fine powder. And it dissolves straight into water. And used under pressure, it has somewhat abrasive properties, but far from as rough as some of the more common blasting materials as sandblasting or aluminum oxide. It's great for gentle blasting of smaller parts like getting carbon off engine valves and just general small sensitive parts blasting. But for this project, blasting off aluminum oxide off my block, I can't recommend it. The process was insufficient, very dirty, and left me with a lot of cleanup to do. So just buy plenty of the cleaning chemicals from the beginning and leave out the blasting process altogether. If you really want to blast the engine, maybe ice blasting would be some more, somewhat more appropriate because this just didn't have enough power. The next thing I did was to use POR15 metal prep. Uh, which is an etching substance that also bonds anti-rusting chemicals into the metal, making a great surface for the paint to adhere to and at the same time giving a bit of rust proofing. I just filled up the spray bottle with the chemical and sprayed the engine and kept it wet for 20 to 30 minutes and then rinsed it off really, really properly. After the metal prep, I put the engine inside, let it dry for about two hours under the, the heating fan over there and now about four hours later, you know, with the tape and stuff, we're ready to paint. I just taped everything, everything that is machined, basically. It's the same thing with these things. You don't want paint on this. If it's machined, it's machined for a purpose. You know, you don't want paint on there. Like right here, the bracket for the alternator and servo pump and stuff like that is going to be right here. If you have paint on here, that's eventually gonna get the bolts loose so don't put paint when you have a machine surface like this you always want to tape it off now the paint we're going to use is this por 15 engine enamel it's a high temp engine paint it resists up to 350 degrees fahrenheit matches original factory colors this color is chevy red it's guaranteed not to burn off it's professional product i have personally never used engine enamel but i have used plenty of the por15 rust agent like the rust stopper the original por15 and it is so good i cannot praise this product enough it is brilliant anyway i am very excited to get this started i just want to get this painted i want to get the gearbox painted don't you want to get this painted yeah don't eat that Nah, you're not going to eat that. She even blinked at me. That was funny. Anyway, let's go.
Well, that did not turn out very good. Oh, look at that. Ooh, that is not good. I don't know what happened. This paint is either bad or you can't compare it to the original PUR 15. Do you want your engine to look like that? No, it looks like crap. I guess the engine block is okay. Didn't really like the color either. I mean, it's red, but it's not, it's like, I don't know, weird red. The gearbox turned out better though. Mm -hmm. At least it's a little bit shiny. It's not as runny. So what I'm going to have to do now, and I've been thinking about this all night, is I will have to sand this rough part out that failed with the runs and ugh, all of that. And then we're going to wrinkle paint the entire top here. I didn't like it in red either. It's First of all, it's the wrong red. I want a darker red. Uh, I would like a red that is more like, that's more like this. This is the type of red I'd like. This dark, nice red. But that is not, that's not even close. And it looked very dark when I bought it. Like they had this color sheet that you could look at and it was very dark but this is i don't know this is more like pink to me it's very light red and i don't think it's gonna work so i'm going to wrinkle paint this i don't know which color i'm gonna go for probably black but i might go red we'll see we'll see what the store has and now with corona times and stuff it can be quite hard to get but i'll see what i can find tomorrow Okay, it is now day two. We've gotten, well, is it day two? No, it's day three now. We got the engine wrinkle painted, and this is how it looks like. Well, that's all we have for today. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and please leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next week. Hi.